then there was um, the wheat and the tear. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I love that parable because the wheat and the tear grow at the same time. It, it says that the, the farmer basically is like, don't pull them too soon. Let them grow at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then it says at the right time, I will separate and bind the tear mm -hmm. and burn it and um, gather the wheat and bind the tear and burn it. And so when I brought this up to you, you have to share with them what you said about why the wheat and tear have to come up at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because when I say it, it puts so much in perspective, mm -hmm. it puts so much of this season in perspective for me. So please share them with them. Yeah. Um, I feel God. Mm -hmm. Um, with what I feel like God is doing at this time, just to just to just to just give that context, I feel like God is separating us now. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a big separation, and it's amazing the people that He's picked. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what we've gone through to get to this moment, but now God is like picking out His people. Mm -hmm. And so with the wheat and tear, the Bible says that the farmer sowed good seed and it was planted. And then at night, while the workers slept, mm -hmm. some enemies came in mm -hmm. and sowed in tears. And it was while the workers were asleep. Mm -hmm. Workers are preachers, ministers of the gospel. There was a time we went to sleep and weren't paying attention and were letting anything fly. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. enemies came in and started sowing things that looked like God, but wasn't God. And those seeds planted in those people's hearts. It's becoming tears now. But in the beginning, it says, don't pull it because if you pull the tears, you're going to pull some of the wheat too. Mm -hmm. Meaning that in their immature phase, they both looked alike. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. In your immaturity in God, you look like you're still in the world. You look like you're still not saved. Mm -hmm. That's why it's confusing to the body because they want you to change how you look so that you can look it right now. But you're just in your immature phase. Mm, mm, mm. You really have pure seed in your heart. Mm -hmm. And there are some that don't. Mm -hmm. And so in their immature phase, they both look alike. But then they grow up. And that's, what, and that's what's happened now. We've grown up. We've matured. And over time, when you mature, when the wheat and the tear mature, the difference between them and, and lit, literally is the tear when it's mature. The weed, it sticks straight up like this. And the wheat, when it's mature... It bows. Mm, mm, mm. And God is seeing who is his and who is not. By their posture. By their posture. Mm -hmm. By who is saying, I'm good. I got this. Grace. I'm good. I'm fine. Grace. Grace. Oh, they finally accept me for me. I've just gone to a place where I'm accepted. AKA, I've gone to a place where they're not challenging me. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm, I'm good. Mm -hmm. And God... Is looking for those that bow, whatever you want to do. Whatever you say, God. Whatever you say. However you want. The wheat bows. Now, here's the part of the story I didn't think about till, till we talked. Mm -hmm. This, this is, is so powerful. Mm -hmm. He says, when that time comes where I see who's bowing in reverence and I see who is just prideful and stuck in their own ways, mm -hmm. who thinks that they found God and have found an imitation, when, I, when that time comes, I take the tear. I bind that up. I burn that. Some people getting ready to be turned over to a reprobate mind. Ooh wee. I turn them over. Go go and get the God that you created. Go, go. Go go get him because I have more pressing business with these guys. Mm. He then takes the wheat and he binds up the wheat. But now the wheat must go through a process. The wheat must be beat and stripped. And then pressed and molded. It's not enough that you've bowed, but you've bowed to be stripped. You've bowed to be beat. This mm -hmm. threshing wheat. Mm -hmm. You bowed to be molded, to be compacted with others. Mm -hmm. And we're both all going through this molding, this pressing, so that you can eventually become bread and feed others. Yeah. And bread, <laughs> when it's bread, it's blessed. And it's broken mm -hmm. and given. The wheat and the tares is a difference between people who want God as they found him and those who are willing to be processed, yeah. stripped, beat, pressed, molded, conformed, mm -hmm. and given to others. Mm -hmm. 
That's the separation we're seeing right now. And we're going to continue to see it. We're going to continue to see it. But if God, if, if, you're, if you're listening to this and you, and you feel like God has been calling you and pulling on you, I need you to respond right now. Mm-hmm. I need you to respond while it's day. Mm-hmm. The night is coming. Yeah. The night is coming. And I see 2024 being a year of deception mm-hmm. in a way that we have not seen before. The Lord spoke to me and said the year 2024 will be a year of false prophecy. Mm-hmm. He said people will stand and boldly declare what I have said and I have not said anything. Mm-hmm. And yes, you've seen it in time past. Mm-hmm. Yes, it seemed like it's going on. He said you're going to see it at a rate you've not seen it before. Lord God. And people who are tares will fall for it because you already want the God that you created. The ones that bow only accept the true God. Yeah. And so that's that's what's happening right now. And I, you know, I get emotional, I guess, about it because I see why I went through all the stuff I went through mm-hmm. and what he was trying to do in me. Yeah. I had to come to the end of myself. Yep. Because I feel like I'm a part of that remnant. Yes. I feel like you're a part of that remnant. And and it's not a few things. And I know we have to get out of here. We have to let these people go. Um, but We holding them hostage. No, I know. I know. But this is so good. And I need you guys to understand. Because we get a lot of these comments um, where, where they hear the strong language of beaten and broken and mm-hmm. death and this. And people wow. feel very... It, it feels off-putting to those who don't believe and don't know God's word. 100%. Um, they feel like, well, what kind of God beats you? And God, or even people who say that they, you know, you they profess the faith and they're like, God isn't, you know, God doesn't beat you. And mm-hmm. da, da, and and let me be and let me be clear. Life is going to life. Period. The difference is, you're you're going to get beaten regardless. regardless. Right. Because life is going to life. Yes. The difference is, is mm-hmm. that the purpose and why, mm-hmm. why are you being beat? Because God doesn't just beat you. Right. Like you mm-hmm. talked about stripping away. He's stripping away things that you were never created to be. That's a kindness of him. He's stripping those things. Like you, you're, you, they hear that and they hear, oh God, he's so mean. I mean, God, no, that's a kindness. You hear beaten, he's beating things out of you. If that's what it takes to get it out of you, that's a kindness. Now, I'm thinking about how I think about my children and mm-hmm. what I would not do to make sure that they're okay. There's nothing that I would, there's no measure that I wouldn't go to to make sure that they're okay. And and what God showed me was, is that in the rough, the, the toughest season of my life, where I lost my marriage, I lost a significant relationship that was so significant to me outside of my marriage, a friendship that was so important to me that was like, I mean, in some ways that person became more important than, you know, my husband and my children, you know what I'm saying? That relationship was so important to me that, Mm -hmm. that fell apart. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, I felt like God, you brought me to, you, you, you brought me out of the shadows and, you know, force me into this thing. I didn't even want to do it all to do what? Like you said, you brought me all this way just to embarrass me. And for now I got all these followers. Now I'm about to be embarrassed in front of everyone. And all this pain that I felt like just impacted me, especially in May came all like hit me at one time. And what God has shown me recently is that the most painful things that I experienced have been a mercy. That was a, that was my mercy. Jesus. I, that was my kindness. And you see that, and other people might see that as like, oh no, you know, what kind of God would allow such horrible things? Like what kind of God would want you to be in that type of pain or what, whatever, but it was his mercy mm-hmm. because had it not been, I would not be with him in the way that I'm with him. I wouldn't be in him in the way that I am. I wouldn't know his word in the way that I know his word. I would not have this intimacy with him like I do now, had I not had everything stripped away from me, had I not lost that marriage, had I not lost that relationship, had I not lost, like all these things, had I had that not been, I wouldn't be who he designed me to be and how kind of him to do anything to restore me back to him. That's how much he loves me. 
He'll do anything to get me back. And I think about my children, and I'm like, if, if, in the sense of the prodigal son, right? Mm -hmm. If my child was to, what lengths would I not go? And mm -hmm. I think about Hosea and Gomer, where he tells Hosea, go get Gomer. And she has now decided to be in prostitution. She's running the streets. She's hoeing around. And, mm -hmm. and God doesn't tell Gomer to go back to Hosea. He tells Hosea to go <laughs> find Gomer. He says, go find her to the point mm -hmm. where if you got to pay for her back, then you pay for her back. He paid for what was already his. Gomer was his wife. And he had to pay to get Gomer back. Mm -hmm. The same thing that God has done for us. We were already his, yet he paid the price of his son to restore us back to him. If he's willing to allow his son to be beaten and broken and intestines ripped out and spine exposed, you think you're not going to go through a little bit of pain to be restored back to him? If that's what he did for his son, yes, you're going to go through something, but it's for a purpose. It's not for nothing. And going through pain without God is for nothing. You do it for nothing, Come on. but going through it with him, for him, it's for something. Cause like you said, the wheat, it gets stripped and gets broken, but it's to give and feed and like, it's for something. It's for something. And yes, my child got diagnosed with autism. He got diagnosed with fragile X syndrome. He's nonverbal. I got a divorce. I lost my friend. I lost my other pocket. All these things mm. to bring me to this, hmm. to bring me to this moment where I have DMs, fl I've flooded with I'm now I'm giving my life to Jesus I'm changing this I'm in therapy I'm talking to my kids about Christ I'm do yeah if he had to he did it wasn't for nothing it wasn't like I went through all that for nothing lives are being changed my life has been changed my children's life the people in my life their lives are changing as a result of my yes to him so it's not for nothing. So you hear these strong languages and you hear these strong words like beaten and broken and sacrifice and dying to yourself. Right. But know that it takes drastic measures to be restored to this drastic God who is the God of the universe. And and it sounds like it's, it's brutal, but it's not. And life is brutal. And doing it without God, you're going to do it for nothing.